Oh hey, if you're a freak who loves a small space, you're gonna love today's episode. Welcome back to a very special spring summer edition of Laugh Cry DIY. I am Katie and today we are doing our very first tiny, 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 tiny balcony makeover. Today is a small space challenge to make over the balcony of my friend Brie. Hi, I'm Brie. Welcome to my balcony. Uh, we're here in Hollywood, California. I moved into this uh, apartment about five months ago. I have not been able to use my balcony much at all. It is two feet by 13 feet. right next to the parking lot of an apartment <laughs> complex next door. So I am uh, really looking for a way to like make it more private. I'm trying to go maximalist, goth, funky, breezy. She's spoho, you know. Um, I get a lot of sun, so I would love to use part of it for plants, other kind of plants. Uh-oh, don't. Get, don't deplatform us. I'm so excited to see what Katie can do. The challenge today is to make it cozier, greener, cuter, and do it all on a major budget. Can we do it? <gasps> Are the birds really loud? So step one, there's a few tactical things we need to do to make the balcony work a little bit better for her. She has these blinds put up. They are loose and there's a lot of wind that comes here that makes them flap. So we're gonna reposition them to give her a properly half shaded patio and to make sure that they don't go flopping in the wind. So like Bree said, um, there's not the prettiest view, so we kind of want to half block that. And also she wants a space to be able to come out here and enjoy like coffee in the morning without the bright sun in her face. So we're gonna move these blinds over side by side to shade half of the balcony. I just slipped on one of the blinds and almost slid off my life. Next up, we wanna cozy up this space with some greenery. And Brie has a direct sun, so that's great. That means we can get some actual live plants out here. But to make it feel a little more lush, we wanted to add some big, bold green moments. And when you walk out onto the balcony, the first thing you see is this little wall. It's California, let's get green, and let's create a full faux plant wall. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, what? Oh, and let's make it to the exact custom dimensions. <gasps> Would you look at that? I custom made this frame. The plants are all like dollar store faux greens. This was like 30 bucks to make. And you can watch the full episode where I make it um, somewhere right here. Now, Brie is gonna put real plants out here and we would all love to have a balcony that is like a lush, beautiful jungle, trees, all that stuff. But because this is so long and narrow, there's really not a lot of place to have a tree standing here. It would take up so much space. So I thought, what if instead of putting plants on the ground, what if we added greenery to the fence? And that's when you're gonna go to the dollar store and that's when you're gonna buy hundreds of dollars of faux green vines. This is a standard ivy and this is kind of like a creeping fig. And the fact that it's just two different types of greenery adds a little more visual interest, depth, texture. So we're just gonna take simple thumbtacks and we're gonna wind these all around. One thing that's super important when you're working with fake plants is to make sure that the correct side is out because otherwise it looks janky and that's just sad. And what I'm doing is laying a base foundation. Um, consider this your primer with just the plain ivy just to create that base. And then I'm gonna go back in with the like prettier striped creeping fig to add some little pops here and there. As I said before, studies have shown even fake plants can change your mood. If you're gonna do this, I actually do recommend that you pre-sort each piece and lie it in a straight line far away from the other one because these are entangled in a very dysfunctional codependent relationship and they need therapy. Last strand, woohoo! Man, they're right on top of the plants. Nature approves. Alrighty, next up. Um, like we said, Brie gets direct sunlight and she can actually grow some really beautiful things out here on the balcony. 
But again, we don't want to be taking up floor space. So we are going to do hanging shelves right here. What if my entire camera just flipped off the balcony? Okay. Alrighty, next up we are gonna make some very simple hanging rope shelves. And what I've gotten here is some pine boards and some sisal rope. And we're gonna start by drilling four holes in the corners of each board. And I'm feeling very lazy girl, so I have cut myself a one by one inch little square, and I'm just using that as my template for where to start my holes. And we're clamping these boards down. And I'm taking a half inch drill bit to drill down. This is exactly the size of uh, this rope, basically. And now, what we have here is some beautiful rope. And we are going to thread that through each hole. And then, look at that. And it will be tied off on a little ring. And you can hook the rings to those hooks. Now the real challenge here today will be making sure that these are level. I don't know how, I just kept nodding and nodding and leveling and I think we have one hanging shelf. Hold please. Level in this house? Who? Now, one thing that will instantly cozy up any outdoor space, make it feel indoor-outdoor, is flooring, by which I mean a beautiful rug. But we had a problem with this balcony. They don't easily make 13-foot runners. They don't always come in the correct width. And we're on a tight budget. So what do you do when you want a rug, but you don't have a lot of money? Welcome to how to make a rug from many other rugs. I went to Five Below, it's a cheap store, and they have these $5 beautiful woven cotton jute rugs, which are the perfect texture, perfect size, perfect everything for our patio. They are three feet each, and we are going to put them all together to make one long runner rug. Mind you, this is a great hack you can do. You can make a bigger rug from mini rugs, from placemats, um, any kind of sturdy fabric can make a great rug if you believe hard enough. So we are gonna stitch these together. We want it to look intentional. So as this is cotton jute, I have gone and gotten dollar store twine and the biggest, fattest needle I could find. Don't mind her. It's not just that you're on the rug, it's that you're right over the middle of where I need to work. So I have these um, ugly side up and we're just gonna pin these together. Now the thing here is that because the twine is going to show, I want it to look very intentional and very evenly spaced with the stitching. So I'm gonna just mark out with a little marker uh, one inch lines on both sides of the seam. That way when we stitch, it'll be very evenly spaced. Because this twine is very thick and therefore pretty strong, um, I don't need to loop it through and stitch it through uh, double. We're just gonna do a single thread through and then tie off on both sides. So as you can see, I've just started stitching this through. No, no. <laughs> I'm just going back through and tightening every stitch. And we're nodding off. And, ta-da. Oh baby, here we go. Now one thing Brie really wanted in the space was a table. A full table and chairs was not gonna work. But they make some incredible products these days. Brie pitched me an idea that I didn't even know about. And that is a hanging fold down table made for balconies. <laughs> What, what, what? You ready? Girl, what?
and it folds down flat when you're not using it. I mean, I'm never gonna stop putting it up, sorry. Now they sell a lot of versions of these online and you can get them in all sorts of designs. We were trying to be budget friendly. So I scored this on Facebook Marketplace, but it was all black. So I spray painted it, hit the top with some wood contact paper, keeping in the natural theme, and no one's ever gonna know. So don't tell them. And although this space is narrow, Brie did have this cute little Ikea bench that tucks right under. So cute, so sweet, so perfect. And now it is time for the piece de resistance. As you can see, we have this little space right here and Brie wanted something that she could put some planters on, some sort of plant stand, plant rack, something. So I was trying to find something that would really fill the space, make the most of it, give her the most surface space. And I was looking at kitchen islands, console tables, all sorts of stuff, but it was really challenging to find a kind of plant stand, plant rack that would fit it nicely. And then I saw a piece on Facebook Marketplace for $18. Hold on, let me get it. Are you ready? <laughs> this isn't really valuable wood or anything. It's a pretty cheap little cabinet. This beautiful piece is something that I hand painted with a sort of um, Indian bone inlay Jodhpur inspired design. And she can use the inside to store soil, pots, extra gardening supplies. And it is sealed. And mind you, we're in LA. It rains less than 30 days a year. We have a covered balcony. Even if it gets a little weathered, a little bit beat up, I think it just adds to the character of the piece. But sometimes bringing the indoors out is a beautiful way to bring soul and vibes to a space. Now we're still not done adding the greenery and the oomph that we want to. So this is a narrow space, it's petite, and we want to add a little fun pop of something. Brie already had this hanging sphere. So I did save one last piece of ivy so that we could add a little drip drip to the space. And in an outdoor space, you guys might recall when I did Jake Kilroy's backyard, I love to bring in like chandelier, pendant lights, something that just feels really fun to make it feel a little inside out. And I have these little fake plants left over in my stash. And yes, we're really giving midsummer with this. Now, one thing Brie did also ask for, if it was possible, she did wonder if there was a way to get extra seating for a friend so that they could just come out here, sip their tea, have some fun. And I found this little beauty at Goodwill for $8. It's a seating ottoman with storage for a blanket or whatever. Brie can also put plants on it if she wants, but this is the perfect little thing to maximize storage and provide cute little seating. And of course, what is a cute, adorable patio without lights? Uh, we have these little mini LEDs. They're USB rechargeable and they're on a remote. So we're just gonna loosely just string them all among the ivy and at night it's gonna be gorgeous. Okay, Brie just texted me. She's on her way home. And now we are getting ready for your big reveal. Yo, it's stunning. Oh, this is so pretty. There we have it. I'm not gonna lie, I think this is the biggest, most drastic transformation I've ever made for the least amount of money. Total cost of this was $150. And I'm so happy to bring it to Brie, who is wonderful and lovely. So if you wanna see more small space transformations, we've got them coming up. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I hope you all have a very, very, very happy summer.